I have another wood stove I want to share with you today. This is made by the French company Solonac and sold through Decathlon. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. First off, I bought this stove myself. It wasn't sent to me for uh, testing and review. And I became aware of it through one of the Facebook groups, and I'll put the information in the video description, of course. And it was an interesting looking stove, and we have a new Decathlon store in our area, just a couple years old, so I decided to see if it was available, and it was, and it was very reasonably priced. So I decided to buy it so that I could test it out, and if I thought it was worthwhile share it with you it's definitely worthwhile having a look at so what I thought I would do is bring the camera in a little closer so that I can put the uh, stove back together in its case take it apart show you what all it came with show you how it's assembled uh, give you some dimensions give you my thoughts on it but more importantly we'll get a fire built in it all right I put the stove back in its case so you can see all the components packed up and I'll open it up and show you everything inside in just a moment so the case itself it's like a heavy duty poly cotton material it seems certainly up to the task I think it's going to be durable in the long run a little loop on one end for hanging it or hanging something from it I guess I wouldn't hang it off my backpack because it does have a bit of weight, as I'll talk about in a minute. There is a zipper across the top that holds everything inside. Now I'm going to pull the stove out and set it aside, and uh, I'll reassemble it for you in a minute. Just want to show you what else is in the backpack, or in the, the case itself. So this is a rather cool feature, and this is something I've used virtually every time I think that I've had the stove out and used it. And this is a combination silicone and fiberglass fireproof mat for laying on the ground. I think that's a really nice feature for them to include because it just provides you extra protection for any surface that you might have this on that could either be marred by the fire like a picnic table or anything combustible so you know as it warms up here and things dry out this is going to be a great feature to have I like having these I've got a few that I've picked up off of Amazon that I use other stoves with for so the fact that they include it I think that's a nice feature we'll put that aside also in the case of course is a set of instructions pictorially and there is, is some additional information in multiple languages inside as well and finally two more features inside of the case this is the grill or grate that you would lay on top of the stove it's intended to be a pot stand the instructions say not to cook on top of it I can't see why not. It's good quality stainless steel. It's quite heavy duty. If you had some low coals and not active flames, I don't see why you couldn't put a burger, small steak, or even a sausage on top of that. I think it would work. Uh, I haven't used it that way yet, but uh, you know, there's a good chance I will. I'll show you how this works with the stove in one moment. And the last thing inside is this, which is a feed wrap. Now, it's made of stainless steel. You can see it's got a little bit of a curve to it now. It came totally flat, but once it took the heat got to it, of course, it took a set like that. I'll show you how that works. So let's bring the stove back in and uh, show you how it's assembled. So you can see it, it is a folding stove. And uh, there's not a lot of folding stoves like this on the market, and certainly not one that's triangular in shape. So let me just open it up because it just opens up like a book. Now inside there are two plates that'll drop down, hinged and drop down plates. The first is the, the ash pan in the bottom you can see that now the ash pan is dropped down so that's an extra level of protection and then the fire grate so there's the fire grate in the bottom as well yeah triangular in nature and uh, let me just give you a few dimensions and weights and things like that on it first I'm going to give you the dimensions because I want to do want to talk about the weight for a moment so the measurements are seven and 7.87 inches tall top to bottom 7.87 inches across 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters so it's kind of a universal now here's a couple things or one more thing to notice where's the side that shows this the best let's just use the back it is actually a little wider at the top than it is at the bottom. Not significantly, but just a tiny bit. So that's just kind of unique. I don't know if that has an impact on the function of the stove or not. You know, things that are wider at the top tend to be act more like fire pits than anything else. And maybe this is, maybe this does have the characteristics of a small fire pit, but we'll talk to that in a moment. Let's have a look at the ventilation. Ventilation at the bottom is provided by a series of slots on all three sides and of course the feed port. Same thing at the top, series of slots across the top for, uh, for exhaust ventilation there. Um, realistically, unless you put a really, really big pot on this that's going to cover all the corners off, you're going to have corner 
uh, exhaust ventilation as well. So I haven't seen an issue from it, but we'll demonstrate that when we get to the fire. It doesn't look like a lot of ventilation down here. In reality, it's enough. It's enough for it to function well, but it's not a hot, fast burning stove as you'll see. It's, it's kind of, I guess it's a cooking stove is the best way to um, describe it. Okay, now I said I wanted to talk about the weight. So let's get back to the weight. This is quite heavy. It is made of 18.8 uh, 304 stainless steel and it is quite heavy. Now the weight I'm going to give you is for the stove, the grill, the, the feed ramp and the case as well as that fireproof mat. So 25 ounces or 710 grams, pound and a half almost. And that's quite a heavy stove. So this is not for an ultralight person. Let's just get that out of the way. But I think a backpacker wouldn't mind, somebody like a bushcrafter who wants to carry a small wood stove, wouldn't mind that way. I certainly don't mind carrying this weight, knowing what I'm getting for it. So here's the thing. Yes, it is heavy and that weight is well it actually works in your favor because it helps to retain heat inside of the stove this is going to heat up and it's going to stay hot for a while so don't think that you can have a quick fire and uh, wait for it to go out and then put the stove away and be on your way it's going to take a few minutes for this to cool down because of the heavy weight of that stainless steel but i like that heat uh, storage it acts like a bit of a heat storage so it helps with keeping the fire going as it burns down into coals and it does have some pretty good cooking coals at the end of it depending if you're using the right wood of course and what's nice is if you want to reinvigorate the flame to get a, 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 the flame up again the heat helps to do that so that's that's what i'm going to say about the weight yes it's a bit heavy but in this case i think it's great there is well this is interesting. Now, you can't count the hinge side, of course, because that's not going to show any warping. I don't see any warping across the front, but I do see the slightest bit across the back, or I guess that would be one of the two sides, the side opposite the one with the hinge in the middle. But again, it doesn't seem to affect the folding up of the stove, certainly not the function of the stove. It doesn't seem to affect it folding up, or make it any less uh, easy to put away. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Now, the fire grate. So the grate itself is triangular in nature, and it has these two extensions on the narrow end, and that it makes it easy or easier for laying on top of the stove. So you would grab it and just kind of drop it right into the grooves that are there at the top of the stove. It doesn't lock it in, but it does keep it from moving, so it's not going to slide off on you. So you can put it either that way, or, or actually the more correct way would be or like this on top. And yeah, so there you go, that's the grill. Now, as I mentioned, it's great for small pots. I don't know that it's necessary for large pots and I have a pot that will actually span the whole side of the whole top of this today. So what, the, what I can say, if you've got small pots that you're going to be using on this and you want to get your fire going, then put this on top, then you can do so. A pair of leather gloves and you can grab it from one of those two tabs and just lay it on top. So that's a nice design feature. And the last thing I want to show you if I can reach it and find it here, is the feed ramp itself. So the way the feed ramp works, you put it in at an angle and then just kind of drop it down. And there you go, the feed ramp is installed. That's actually a much more useful feature than I might have thought. You can see it's got a slight downward ramp to the feed ramp. And this allows me to feed in quite long sticks, which is what I'm going to be doing in a few moments just for demonstration purposes. So yeah, overall design. Now, my concern was if I lost this, would it still work? Yes, it does. It works just fine. It just happens to work a little better with it because you can feed longer sticks in easier. All right, let's get it set up and I'll cook my lunch on it. All right, I have the stove set up on the ground, even though the ground is wet, very, very wet. I've still put it on the mat just to show you how the mat is just a nice thing to have. So get a little bit of birch bark, put it inside here. And, oh, you know what, before I do that, I wanted to show you one other thing. Let me just take the feed ramp out, because this is kind of a, an interesting thing. Um, like I would do with all of my stoves, I look at it from in terms of versatility. Yes, it's a wood stove. How well does it function as a wood stove? But also, can I use alternative fuel sources in it? Things like wood pellets, charcoal, alcohol stoves, and anything else that might be a workable solution. So I will tell you this right now. 
it does not mate up well with an alcohol stove without modification. Now, I expect that if I wanted to drill holes in the sides, I could probably find a position for using a, an alcohol stove like a Trangia, but as it is, it would not be an easy adaptation to do so. Uh, I tried it with wood pellets, thinking that wood pellets might work very well in the stove because the fire grate is, is the slots in it are small enough that um, the fire pellets wouldn't drop through. Well, that's true, but it just does not have the airflow necessary to keep the wood pellets well oxygenated for a good burn. Those holes, as I pointed out earlier along the bottom, they just don't provide all the airflow coming up from underneath. Now, I did get good airflow coming in through here, obviously, but it would just as easily blow out the flame in the wood pellets as it would keeping it oxygenated. So wood pellets, and of course, you can only get so many wood pellets in. What I did is I poured them in and then tilted it to the back so they kind of sloped upwards on the back, thinking the air would cross over the surface of them and, and help, and it did. It's still not a good choice. It works, just doesn't work very well at all. And of course, I did try it with charcoal. Charcoal was interesting. It worked quite well with charcoal, but it does suffer somewhat the same issue it does with wood pellets. Not the airflow issue so much. It was just enough, but you know, small pieces of charcoal are gonna to want to roll out of here. So it's not a great stove for alternative fuels with the exception of one thing that I found. And that is a gas canister stove, a remote feed gas canister stove. And I brought one of my gas canister stoves out today. I actually used it to make my tea when I got here. So this is my Fire Maple Polaris remote gas canister stove. And it's the triangular set of this, the three stands that make this work quite so well. So let me just feed that through, drop it down inside and we're good to go. And that's all I had to do. So it's, it's like a built-in windscreen now, and I can lay the pot on top. Uh, pot gap in this case is about an inch and a quarter. So it's well within the realm of functionality, and, but it's very well protected from the wind inside of there. So that is an option if you don't always want to be burning wood in your stove. You want an option to make a quick cup of tea, so that works. Now, put the fire or the feed ramp back on. It's good. I've got the grill handy. And all right, now let me put my birch bark back in and I have a few pieces of it. Off the forest floor is not necessarily the easiest stuff to work with, but I think it'll do the trick here. I'm just gonna light it with a Bic lighter in any case. So let's get this going, find my Bic lighter somewhere. All right, that wasn't very good. Covered it up with some of my fuel. All right. uh, there we go, that's a bit better. As long as it goes inside the flames. A second for the birch bark to catch on. A little bit of the smallest spruce twigs. This is going to get very smoky for a minute and a lot of flame before I can move on to the next step of adding some small fuel or still kindling in many ways. As you can see, drafting well enough, of course, that fuel is going to burn regardless. Give that half a second, and then I can put a little bit more fuel on top. Grab my gloves so I can do this. And just some little broken sticks off of the ground there. The next level of fuel, very random. And I could probably start feeding in a few more other pieces of wood off of the ground. I'm 
I'm doing the initial load of sticks, of course, from the top, just because it's easier, but I'll be switching over to using the feed ramp in a moment or two. Now, this is softwood, so it's not the... Well, it burns fast, lights up fast and everything, of course, but tends to be smoky. What else have I got here? i got to give that a second. It's, all, it's slow to catch on today. So this is a good um, comment to make on the stove right now. That initial flare-up was not a good indicator of airflow. Most stoves will do that with the, uh, the right fuel. And in this case, of course, it was birch bark and uh, spruce twigs. It's after that, when you get, engage the rest of the fuel, you, you can see it took a bit of time for that to engage. So what that tells me is this is not a super highly ventilated stove. I was going to say well ventilated. It's ventilated sufficient to the task, but it's not a real highly ventilated, hot, super hot burning stove by comparison to some. But I think we're... All right. We have some fuel going. Go ahead. Just a couple more pieces. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on the microphone here, but the daily search and rescue helicopter pass over whenever I'm recording. Yeah, once again, you can see it's taking its time to catch back up as I add more fuel into it. But it has, there you go, nice clear flames coming above. All right, so I'm putting a pot on. I have a pot half full of water here. Maybe I'll wait for the helicopter to go over. I thought they were new. I thought they knew my schedule, right? But okay. <laughs> That's just what happens. All right, let me put the pot on. We'll see how this works in terms of airflow. Now, mind you, my pot was covered in tar, but, you know, that is a bit, bit better. It always takes a second once you put a pot on. Your pot is cold. It's going to dampen the, the uh, airflow down the smoke. You can see the smoke is a bit smoky here, but you can still see quite a bit of ventilation around the four, the three corners, four corners, Mark. No four corners here. And... While we're waiting for that to pick up a little bit more, drop my lunch in, which is two eggs for hard-boiled eggs. If I can do that without burning myself. There we go. All right, that's better. You can see once it, the wood is really engaged, there's less and less smoke. There's still some smoke, but I think in this case, some of that's coming right off of the pot itself. Maybe I'll bring it back in a few moments' time when some of that fuel is burnt down because I wanted to show using the feed ramp itself. All right, a little bit of a different view. I thought I'd just take you down a little lower so you can see inside of the stove. You can see the nice coals building up inside. Sticks I'm putting in now aren't all that long, but they can still take advantage of the feed ramp. Some nice hardwood. That's not hardwood, though. Maybe we'll leave it at that, what I've got in there now, anyway. All right, the heavy flame and smoke has all died down. And now I've just got a steady cooking kind of flame. Again, not a really hot stove, but certainly a stove that's uh, well designed for cooking. All right, so all I've got to do now is just uh, cook up my lunch, make some coffee, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, just before we close this video out, I'm going to enjoy some of my coffee while it's still warm. Got to love it. All right. So it occurs to me, something I hadn't mentioned right at the start of the video that you may want to know is, how much does it cost? Well, that's probably the thing that attracted me most to the stove, other than the fact that it's unique in design. $45 Canadian, free shipping to the store store was close enough for me to go get it. 
So I just paid $45 Canadian plus tax, of course. So um, yeah, value wise, this is hard to beat because that's a really good price for a well-constructed stove to say the least. But it's only a good price if the stove lives up to your expectations. So let's just talk about that. So here's the thing. I, I put the stove out probably 10 minutes ago and uh, dou douse the coals, let it cool off. And you know, it's still warm, not hot, but still warm. I can still feel the warmth in the stainless steel. It's kind of like a Gen 2 firebox in stainless steel, how it holds its uh, the warmth because of the stainless steel and uh, because it is heavy duty. Now, like as I mentioned, there is a benefit to having that heavy stainless steel, which is the warmth retention, which helps get a fire going after it's starting to die off. But if you're looking for a stove, that is very light to set up, very quick to use, you know, get a fire going, get your meal cooked or your water hot, and then let it cool off very quickly. It's not this stove. This is quick to set up, quick to get a fire going, but it's gonna be slow to cool off. So that's just something to be aware of. Yeah, okay, so is it worth the $45? Well, absolutely it is. It is a good performing stove, but you have to keep in mind that it does have some limitations. One that triangular shape which is very unique is still limited in size in terms of how much wood you can get in so you're not going to pack this thing full of wood i have done some vertical loads and let it burn from the top that works pretty well as well but i think the more traditional bottom top a bottom up burn works just as well with this style of stove i really like that feed wrap it allows me to stick longer sticks in after my initial burn starts to settle down i can just kind of continue to feed the stove in and uh, yeah, ventilation. It is not a really well ventilated stove. It doesn't have a lot of airflow coming in through the bottom and exhausting out through the top. So it's a little bit slow and it can be a little bit smoky when you put a pot on top of it, at least until the fire gets good and hot. And I think that was well demonstrated in the, a minute ago when I had the fire going. It really had to get hot before the smoke died down. So that's something else to be aware of. The other thing is I've had some extended burns in this because I was just wondering, well, let me see if I can show you the inside. You can see the fire grate and just below it, half an inch or so is the uh, ash pan underneath and with that little bit of ventilation along the side is I wonder what it would be like after an extended burn would it load up with ash and start to choke the airflow off from the bottom and the answer is yeah it does uh, not severely but more than other stoves of uh, similar design. Okay, there's not too many with uh, triangular designs, but let's, the only one I can compare it to right now is a folding stainless steel stove would be the Gen 2 Firebox. That won't build up uh, ash in the bottom so that it chokes it off because of the way it just clears itself out for lack of a better term. But this will give me a good fire for, I don't know, half an hour or so, depending on what type of wood, as long as your wood is dry and hardwood, it'll burn hot, or it'll burn not overly fast. I think it's just a good little cooking stove. But yes, if you want to go for an extended burn for a long period of time, it's going to build up ash and choke off airflow to a certain degree. If you're okay with those things, then it's worth your $45. I don't I didn't show putting this on while it was burning, but I did show how it was intended to go on, so like that. I just didn't need it in this fire because uh, uh, the pot was big enough that it went right across the whole top. Now, if you're using a smaller pot, like something like a 750 milliliter pot or, or something like that, you know, you're gonna want to use this grate because it, the pot would be smaller than the opening on the top of the stove. But for the most part, no, I don't think you need to use it. As I mentioned, I don't see any reason why you couldn't grill on it as long as you had some grilling coals and not open flame, why you couldn't cook a steak or a sausage or a burger or something on top of that. No reason why not, just make sure it's cleaned off. Uh, yeah, okay. That's all the comments I have for the stove. I will put the link to where I purchased mine on Decathlon Canada. Uh, it may be different for you if you're in the US or Europe, of course, but Decathlon now being a worldwide stove, for at least North America and Europe, uh, it's a pretty readily available. And I'm, you know, Decathlon, by the way, if you weren't worth aware of this, you become a decathlon member for virtually nothing. I think it's a full year return policy on these things. I have no intention of returning things. I don't mean these things, but anything that you buy there. Decathlon is quite the store, and there's a lot of good value uh, 
uh, products there for the outdoors person, regardless of what your sport is. And uh, yeah, that's enough said about decathlon. I'll put the links in and all the specifications in the video description. But if you have any comments or questions, put that in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.